Welcome to the Tips for Homeschool Science Show, where we're breaking down the lofty ideals of teaching science into building blocks you can use in your homeschool. I'm Paige Hudson, and for Season 5 of this podcast, we're answering your questions about teaching science at home. Let's dig into this week's question. A mention of science education, or STEM, will almost always bring up a mention of the scientific method. But what is the scientific method, and how do we incorporate it into our homeschools? This is exactly what we are going to chat about in today's episode. Using the scientific method regularly will teach the students to look for all the evidence before making a statement of fact which makes it a significant part of science education. So it's important that we understand what it is and how to use it in our homeschools. So let's dig in. First, what is the scientific method? In a nutshell, the scientific method teaches the brain to logically examine and process the information it receives. It requires that one observes and tests before making a statement of fact. It's also the main method that scientists use when asking and answering questions. So a scientist follows these same steps every time he employs the scientific method. And these are to ask a question, to do some research, to formulate a hypothesis, to test with experimentation, to record and analyze observations and results, and to draw a conclusion. I've shared in the past about these steps in detail, and there will be a link in the show notes for this episode to this article. But next, why is the scientific method so important? Well, the scientific method is important for the homeschooler to teach because it's a fundamental process in science. But the benefits of teaching your student this process will go beyond their science class. Not only is the scientific method important in science, but it's also a technique that trains a student how to answer a question in a logical manner. So this method teaches the student to analyze and process the information he or she is receiving. In short, the scientific method trains the brain to logically examine and process information it receives. And that's why it's important for us to share it in our homeschools. So how can we incorporate the scientific method into our homeschool? Well, students need exposure to the scientific method over and over again until it becomes a natural habit. This will take years to really fully etch this idea into the student's mind. So the basics of the scientific method are something that you need to introduce from the very start. That said, teaching this process looks a little different to the various ages. During the preschool and elementary years, our students can be introduced to the principles of the scientific method through representation. So we do this by emphasizing curiosity and observation across subject lines, which allows the students to become familiar with step one. And then we also do this by modeling steps four through six to our students as we do regular scientific demonstrations. During those demonstrations, we're showing them how an experiment works. We're showing them how to record and analyze their observations and any data we collect. And then we're also showing them how to draw a conclusion. By allowing these students to learn science through observation-based methods, we're representing different portions of the scientific method, and this serves to build skills that they'll need in the coming years. That's why we recommend teaching science during the grammar stage or the early elementary years. We start then so that we build the foundation that they'll need through the middle school and high school years. So middle school students can interact with the principles of the scientific method through hands-on inquiry-based experiences. During these years, we can begin to allow middle school students to perform their own experiments, of course, under our guidance. And we can also offer them a chance to use the scientific method from start to finish through the Science Fair Project. The key here is to allow middle school students to have real life, hands-on, inquiry-based interaction with the scientific method in a controlled environment. By giving them these opportunities, we create a pathway for etching the process into their minds. As we move on into the high school years, these students can gain competency with the principles of the scientific method through repeated application. So at this point, we need to offer our high school students freedom to manage their own experiments and draw their own conclusions. 
Of course, we will still be supervising everything they do with science, but these students will take a little bit more of the reins of their education on. And then we'll also continue to lead them through the process of answering their own scientific questions. High school students are learning how to be in the driver's seat of their educational journey. We can provide them with the source of information they need while still permitting them the freedom to uncover what they need to know. In other words, we can mentor high school students as they learn to follow the steps of the scientific method on their own. So in a nutshell, when you teach your students to use the scientific method, it will train their brains to answer the questions they have in a logical manner. Allowing our students to interact with the steps of the scientific method through hands-on experiences and through repeated applications during the course of their educational journey will serve to firmly etch this foundational concept into their minds. If this all sounds intimidating, it's not. Remember, you are simply teaching your students to take the time to discover the answer to a given problem by using the knowledge they have, as well as the things they observe and measure. So I trust that by now you understand a bit more about the scientific method and how to incorporate this process into your homeschool. To see the full transcript of this podcast, along with a few helpful links about the scientific method, head on over to elementalscience.com slash blogs slash podcast slash 82. That's elementalscience.com slash blogs with an S slash podcast slash this episode's number, which is 82. Well, that's a wrap on season five. Next week, we'll share a post on the Elemental Science blog with the questions from this season, plus six more to help you teach science at home. We have some interesting plans for season six, which I won't reveal now. This next season will begin in February of 2020, but until then, we'll continue to share our monthly tips. I hope you have a great week playing with science.